Tony over here putting his sexy chaps on. Mm -hmm. Hello YouTube, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be swapping out my chopped engine guard down there with a full engine guard that's in the box and some lower fairings. Why? Because here in Memphis, um, last week it was, well, it was comparatively cold for what it normally is. We had highs in the lower 40s, lows in the 20s. Um, today and I think for the next week, it's gonna be a little bit more average temperatures between the 50s and 60s. But I figured it was a good time to uh, swap these out and put my lower fairings back on. Um, this is a 2021 Rogue Glide Special. Uh, it came with the chopped engine guard that you see there. So when it got cold last year um, in the winter, um, I started layering up and layering up and decided that lower fairings would be the way to keep um, wind and some of the cold air off my legs. And it does great. I loved it. Um, as a matter of fact, my white spike over there, you can see those lower fairings on there. Um, I added those. Those are the Amazon ones. Those are the Harley ones. Um, and I got the Amazon ones just to see if they're different, comparable, anyways. But the reason why these lower fairings are off from last season, and I had this, was because my engine was getting extremely hot. I mean, hot. Um, and I decided that I probably could not run that in the in the springtime or summertime definitely because just the restricted airflow coming into the motor i may talk more about that here in a second but i am going to take off the chopped engine guard and get that on to do this project you will need some basic tools um, some sockets some wrenches still a screwdriver your allens and some torx i don't remember specifically what it is but i'll announce it when i go through the video to do this project, you will need to take off the front fairing because of your fairing support brackets right here, this piece uh, that you see. You do need to take that off because you will be replacing that. And then obviously that piece comes off and I'll show you the rest. First thing I need to do is take off my motorcycle bell there. That's important, don't forget to do that. All right, so the first thing I like to do is cover my fender with just a towel. Um, I'm gonna be working around with some ratchets and we'll be moving this so I want to protect that fender from anything um, mainly from my clumsiness now down here let me get where you can see at the bottom of this engine guard you see that right there that is a T45 and if you can get to that without having to take off your footrest here more power to you I however um, I'm going to say right now, I'm not going to be able to get to that without taking off my footrest here. And I'm definitely not going to be able to torque that down to what I want to without taking this off. So let's take this off. Let's take this footrest off. I have the Ciro um, frame mounted highway pegs. And what they are is they replace this piece that you see here with a solid piece. That way it's not attached to your engine guard which is a problem I ran into with the chopped engine guard. But I love these, so we're going to take uh, this out so I can get to that bolt there. All right, so to take this off, this one, this one, and this one, all three of these are 5 16 Allen. So I'm going to take this off, and then this platform um, should all come off. All right, guys, so as you can see, this 5 16 Allen took all three of these bolts off, um, and that gives you easy access to that Torx bolt right there. So I'm gonna take off both sides, that way I can get to that easy, and we'll get this engine guard off. All right, so I'm over here taking off um, this side floorboard. I forgot to mention that two of these screws that attach this one um, actually screw into what the kickstand go into. So there's, there's one that was up here like that, I already took that one out. It was right there. I'm working on this one here. And there's one there. Um, as you can see, that's where the this hole in your jiffy stand. So you do need to either put this bike in a wheel chalk or put it on a center stand to do this. All right, so I got the left floorboard off. And this is a, a good chance to inspect your stuff here. 
as you can see, um, this one here, it was actually broke um, right there and it's cracked. You can see down here, right there. And also, you, uh, I'm not sure you can tell in this video, let me focus here. This, this bolt, there we go. This bolt is uh, pretty crooked. Um, I have dropped this bike. I mean, I'm not afraid to say it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty bent. I have dropped this bike on the left side. Fortunately, I wasn't moving. Um, it was just a drop. But that drop obviously um, put a couple of stress fractures there on this. So, but it's okay. I probably need some more highway, uh, highway pegs. That's from me dragging my floorboards while turning. Um, so anyways, I'm probably gonna order a new set of those um, because I'm pretty sure I can't just order one. But anyways, I'll have a new set of those with new bolts because thankfully I'm not gonna be re reusing that one. And you can see how much I've been dragging, uh, dragging my floorboards with that. That's what happens when you uh, take a uh, police motor training. You like to show off a little bit. You also get over the fear of dropping your bike like a bazillion times. Anyway, so I got the floorboard off. I can access this bolt now too. So the only thing holding the engine guard on at this point would be this Torx on both sides and then these two screws that are in here. Those two, that, that one there and that one there. So once I take those off, this engine guard will be free and I can remove it. All right, so once again, this is a T45 that we're going to do here. I'm gonna take this side out, I'm gonna take the other side out, and then I'm gonna work on those two in there that I showed you. All right, guys, so I have those two bolts out from the bottom. Now I'm going to go for these two bolts in here. They are a 3 16th Allen, so I'm going to take those out. And as soon as I do, this lower part, this ch uh, lower chopped engine part, will be ready to come off. All right, guys, so I actually wind up taking this one out, and then when I loosened that one, the uh, chopped engine guard back here slid right out. Now, once you get that off, you'll have to put these screws back in because you see here it holds this oil radiator um, in place at the top. So be sure to put your screws back in and tighten it up. All right, guys, so I got, the, I got these bolts tightened up here. Now we're gonna start taking off um, this fairing support bracket. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take off these two bolts here, this one here and this one here. Uh, this is also a, I believe it was 5 sixteenths, no, 3 sixteenths. That's a 3 16 Allen, the same one you'll use on these. And this one here is a quarter inch. The top one is a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out and then we'll work on taking the fairing off. All right, so I got these two bolts out here. I forgot that this bottom one here where you use the 3 16 Allen, it has a nut on the back of it. That is a 7 16 that you'll have to fit a wrench up behind here where my finger's at and hold it while you take that off. So don't forget about that. Now we're ready to take off the fairing. All right, so we're gonna take off the windshield first. To do that, we're gonna take off four of these screws that hold it in. I have a, a uh, Rick Rack camera mount over there, but if you don't have that, it'll just be another screw. All right, guys, so I took off all four of those and then the windshield lifts right up. To take this piece off, you just reach underneath here and you pop gently up on one side, reach over here pop up on the other side, which is not doing. There we go. And the only thing holding those in are those white tabs right there, and they pop into there. That's how you take this piece off. All right, now for these um, speaker grill guards, you'll see some people, they'll put like a pick in there, and they'll push it out. But if you do this part, you can actually just reach in here with your hand and pop this tab out like that and take them out and then there will be a screw down here that you'll need to take out and then you need to take out this screw here in your blinker and you'll need to take out this bottom one 
this bottom screw down here. The top one can stay in, it's the bottom one that comes out. All right, so the other thing I did, I actually switched this screw with this screw, and the only reason I did because this one was black and I wanted it on the outside. But however, stock factory, whatever you want to call it, this screw here is a T30. So I'm going to use this T30 to take it out here because that's where I swapped it to. All right, so like I said, I switched this screw with the blinker. This is a 3 16 And down here, you only need to take out this bottom T screw. It's a T25. The top one can stay. The bottom one needs to come out on both sides. Don't forget, you need to unplug your blinkers on both sides. And now once you do all that, once you take the screws out, this fairing is going to want to come off. So some people will put one of these screws back in here real lightly just to hold it in. I have these accent lights. They don't affect anything as far as taking the fairing on and off, but it does make it snug. So I'm not worried about mine falling off. All right. So that fairing just pulls, will slide just straight off. You can set it down to the side like I have. Now, the only thing holding in this support bracket, because I've already taken those two off down there, are these right here. And this is an 11 millimeter socket. So once you take that off, um, there won't be a whole lot supporting your fairing. So you don't want to ride without a fairing support bracket. So I'm going to take this 11 millimeter socket off on both sides and lift that off. Got Tony over here putting his sexy chaps on. All right, so once you undo those two 11 millimeter, 11 millimeter bolts, um, the top part of this bracket, as you might have noticed, was beneath that top part, and it just slides right off. So be careful not to hit your fender if you didn't cover it with a towel. And now we're ready to put on the full engine guard and the support brackets. All right, so I got the full engine guard here. Obviously, those tabs down there are going to go where the other ones went. Now, this top tab here, it is going to fit in that top part behind the plate. Um, and you'll see here in a second exactly how it goes in. Uh, just takes a little finagling. All right, so I got that one tightened there and I have both of these tightened on each side. Now we're ready to add the lower on. Now, this is a little hard to do one-handed, but you need to take this piece off and there's a nut holding that on on the other side. And the way you get to that it's just by opening up that compartment and loosening it. And that's a that's 11 millimeter. Once you do that, these right here, these are 11 millimeter also. You'll loosen that, take this off, and you'll clamp that around there. And then this piece down here, I say 13 millimeter. You'll take that nut off. You'll run this through the bottom piece here, and you'll see how this fits together. Really simple. What I like about the Harley lowers is that they already come mostly assembled. You don't have to assemble them near as much as you do the Amazon ones. So let me put this together real quick and you'll see how it fits together. All right, so this slid in pretty easy. You can see it's still loose. I don't have it attached anywhere, but you'll put your clamp back here. You'll put your clamp back on those, tighten them down. Um, I wouldn't tighten them too tight. And then you put your other little rubber clamp here down at the bottom with that bolt. Now there will be a gap here. Don't try to force this all the way flush against it. It won't go that way. There will be a slight gap there. So if you see that, don't freak out. You'll have a little bit of adjustment once you get everything tightened down. All right. All right. So like I said, this fits a little awkwardly in here. There will be a gap right here. Um, if you go look at any of the Harleys on the showroom floor, um, you probably never notice, but that gap still is there. So like I said, don't worry too much about it. Um, tighten these down with an 11 millimeter socket. This one here, I use a 12 millimeter. This right here is a Torx, and I used a uh, T40 to tighten that down. Once you have that down and you snug them down, you'll be able to put your cover here on, and there's a um, screw that comes through, and you'll be able to put that bolt on, and that's an 11 millimeter. And you access that right through there. So once you do that, you'll have the lower fairing on, and you just repeat 
this for the same side. It's the exact same thing. Um, just a little time consuming. But let me get the other side on and, well, let me get this on and you'll see how it looks. All right, so I got that washer nut tightened inside there that attaches to this. Don't over tighten it too much. Um, it is plastic, so you will break it. Um, but like I said, there's what that side looks like. And like I said, if you, you probably even haven't noticed this gap here until I pointed it out or you try to install these, but it's there, it's normal. Um, I mean, I wish they designed it differently or better, but to my knowledge, I can't get that gap closed up much closer. Um, but like I said, it, you know, the edge of that part right there, it, it covers everything. And then of course you got your little glove compartment here that you push to open and push to close. And then down here you have your vents that open and close. Um, I do think that these vents are better than the Amazon ones. They feel more sturdy. This right here is, feels like a more sturdy plastic than the Amazon lowers. And like I said, you don't have to assemble these from scratch. The Amazon lowers, you pretty much have to assemble the whole thing from scratch. And it's pretty tedious. I did not like it. And I would rather just have the Harley ones. But I mean, if you're into, like so you can see from here, those are glossy, shiny. It just feels like a cheaper plastic. They look fine, but um, it was a pain in the butt to assemble. The Harley ones, you don't have to do near as much assembly. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this for the other side, and then we'll go from there. All right, so as you can see here, I got the other one on. Everything's tightened down. It goes on the exact same way the other one. You've got a nut that goes through there with a washer. Now we're gonna attach our fairing support brackets. These are also Harley, um, just because my Harley store had them. These are shaped um, a little differently. So one obviously belongs on one side, the other belongs on the other side. So just have to kind of look and see which way they go on. If you're looking at the front of the bike, I don't know how to describe this to you. This one, they only go on one way. They're not interchangeable, but the screws face to the rear and it faces inside. So I know this one goes on the clutch side of the bike and obviously the other bracket goes on the throttle side of the bike. But it just takes a little bit looking, getting used to. If you try to do it the other way, if you try to do it backwards, they just won't go on. Um, so anyways, I'll undo these two screws here. I'll put it around there. And then this piece here goes right there with the nut that the bolt that we took out. All right. So once you get the fairing support bracket on, it should look like that. Okay. So that's how it's going to look. That's an 11 millimeter bolt up here that holds us in. And on the back, I'll use this one as an example. On the back of these, these are a 532nd Allen wrench that you'll use to tighten those down. If I, if I had to do this over again, which this is my second time doing this, I, sh I would have installed the fairing support brackets first because it's a little bit of a tight fit with the uh, lower fairings on to try to reach back there and tighten those. But, you know, live and learn. So hope you learned from my mistake. I'm going to do the other side now and uh, the lower fairings should be done. So here's something I just discovered too if you're like me and you put your lower fairings on first before your brackets. Um, you can actually just hang them like this and now you can put those two screws with the back piece in a whole lot easier and just leave them loose and then you can attach your top one here. All right, so got the other lower fairing bracket on. Like I said, 11 here and 532nd Allen wrench for the back of the bracket. Um, once again, it's easier to put the brackets on first, then do your lower fairings, because it's just easier to reach all that stuff. And then you have nothing in the way when you put the lower fairing on. But that is what they look like. Look pretty symmetrical, look pretty good. They do an excellent job keeping the wind off your, uh, keeping off your legs, the front of your legs, keeping off your toes. Um, 
I thought about adding the Kuryakin tracer lights to the uh, lower fairings. I don't know if I will or not, because like I said, I take them, you know, last summer I took them off because my bike was getting too hot. But now that I got a uh, more efficient dyno tune from DC Cycle and Racing, which you've seen some of my videos, I've been hanging out with them a little bit. Um, we'll see how uh, this coming spring and summer temps do with it. But anyways, we are ready to put the fairing back on here. Okay, so once again, be sure to put your bottom torque screw in there. Be sure to put your blinker bolt in there. And be sure to put your speaker fairing bolt in there. And like I said, I switched this one and that one because I like the black on the outside. Not that anybody would ever notice, but that's what I did. Um, be sure to plug in your turn signals again. And then we're going to pop this piece back on. And then we'll be able to put our four screws in our windshield and we should be done. All right, guys. So got the fairing back on, got my windshield on, screws in. Um, be sure to put your speaker grates back on after you get everything tightened up. Um, but that is what it looks like from the front. I can take off the towel now, I guess. But there's your full engine guard with the lower fairing swap. Um, like I said, I like it. It really keeps a lot of the uh, cold air off of you, off your legs, off your feet. It really keeps you warmer. Um, for me, though, uh, we're going to have to see when the spring and summertime come um, how the engine temps do. I did have the vents open last summer, last spring, and like I said, it may have been my tune back then, but it got really hot. But I'm going to leave these off until I can order some new Ciro. Uh, frame mounted highway pegs, and then I'll get those on. But like I said, if you have your own um, floorboards or your stock ones, I'm sure you can put those on no problem without me assisting you guys. Um, it's been great, thanks for watching. Now, I'm probably gonna do a video of this uh, S100 stuff that I so graciously got from DC Cycles, from Erica and the team over there. And as you can see, my bike is filthy. So, it's gonna be a good video. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I'll join you again. And like I said, I'm gonna shoot another video.